Entrance him number three two seven number three hundred and twenty seven praise to the holiest verses one three five and seven. Beloved, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And good morning, beloved. Good morning, Father. We come together once again as God's family to thank him and praise him. Let us ask him to help us prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries as we acknowledge our sins and ask for his mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. 
Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the Father's right hand, receive a prayer. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, you alone are the Most High. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Beloved, as we prepare ourselves for the opening prayer, we keep in mind all the people who've asked us to pray for them. We keep in mind the various issues and situations in our country and in our world. We surrender these into the hands of our God. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to Moses, taking some of the spirit that was on Moses, the Lord bestowed it on the 70 elders. And as the Spirit came to rest on them, they prophesied. Now two men, one named Eldad and the other Medad, were not in the gathering, but had been left in the camp. They too had been on the list, but had not gone out to the tent. Yet the Spirit came to rest on them also, and they prophesied in the camp. So when a young man quickly told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp, Joshua, son of Nun, who from his youth had been Moses' aide, said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses answered him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets? Would that the Lord might bestow his spirit on them all? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response to the psalm is The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. 
The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. Though your servant is careful of them, very diligent in keeping them, yet who can detect failings? Cleanse me from my unknown faults. The precepts of the Lord Give joy to the heart. From wanton sin especially restrain your servant. Let it not rule over me. Then shall I be blameless and innocent of serious sin. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. A reading from the letter of St. James. Come now, you rich, weep and wail over your impending miseries. Your wealth has rotted away. Your clothes have become moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have corroded. And that corrosion will be a testimony against you. It will devour your flesh like a fire. You have stored up treasure for the last days. Behold, the wages you withheld from the workers who harvested your fields are crying aloud, and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on earth in luxury and pleasure. You have fattened your hearts for the day of slaughter. You have condemned. You have murdered the righteous one. He offers you no resistance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God. Glory. Oh, Oh, praise him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Your word, O Lord, is truth. Consecrate us in the truth. Glory to God. Glory. Oh, praise him. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory, oh, praise the name of the Lord. Beloved, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Listen to a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. Jesus replied, do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him. If a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than with two hands to go into Gehenna into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into Gehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Beloved, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Beloved, I don't know about you, but every time I read or hear that gospel, I get a little terrified. Sin is very serious. So serious that God the Father had to send his son, Jesus, our Savior, to save us from sin. When we read scripture, beloved, we all have to be careful as well as conscious of how we are to approach and understand scripture. For those who take scripture literally, and yes, there are parts of scripture which are plain and clear and literal, well, one has to be careful where this particular passage is concerned. Because if we all took the word of the Lord seriously in today's gospel, how many of us will still have two hands, two eyes, two feet? Indeed, take it a step further. If the Lord were to say, if your mind is always thinking negatively of people, and if your mind rests only in the darkness of the world, not in the light of the kingdom of God, then you need medication. It is better for you to get medication for your mind than to enter into life thinking that you are okay. Take it another step. If your tongue continues to speak evil of others, destroying others, gossiping in unsound ways with your family and friends against others, then we would probably hear Jesus saying, time to cut it out. If your heart, a heart that I made for you, cannot love, cannot forgive, cannot be warm and hospitable to the very people I send in your lives, then perhaps you need a heart transplant. In other words, beloved, Jesus is using today's words to try and wake up the people. Too many times, too many of God's people, starting with the crowd who followed him, and up to today, we are caught in spiritual slumber. We have become so accustomed to the various sins in our lives that sometimes we don't even pay attention to them or even name them or know them. What is Jesus doing in today's gospel? He's using hyperbole. He's using words to deliberately shock the people back into facing up to what sin actually does. It makes us spiritually lame. It makes us spiritually disabled. It prevents us from seeing God in self or others. And so, beloved, as we ponder today's scripture, the reality is Jesus is telling us not to overlook when we are in grave danger because of sin. Just because the world says it's okay, it doesn't mean that it's okay for us who follow him. So how then, beloved, do we approach sin in our lives, conscious that Jesus is saying, wake up, my people. Wake up. Stop being in spiritual slumber. Stop taking your sins and others for granted. But recognize that if you continue, you run the risk of being separate from me for all eternity. I believe there's a practical and a spiritual approach to sin. The practical has two components. The first is this. If you place a vanilla or a strawberry cake in front of me, chances are you can leave my presence come back a few hours or at the end of the day, and you will see that it remains uncut. If, however, you place a nice chocolate cake in front of me, and you turn your back for five minutes, chances are it's already eaten off. <laughs> because I know I have a weakness for chocolate cake. When it comes to our own lives, each of us is made differently, and therefore each of us must be consciously discerning in prayer. To answer that simple question, what are the weaknesses in my life? You see, beloved, if we're not conscious of our weakness, then we won't know what it is that will trigger us to fail and fall. Therefore, if I know I have a weakness for chocolate cake, 
I must be very careful and conscious that I don't have too much around me. Or else the sin of gluttony and the unforgivable sin of getting overweight is going to be upon me. And that is true of all of us. When we choose to ask the Holy Spirit to not just reveal our strengths so that we can use them for God's glory, but also reveal the weakness, then we know what it is we have to look out for. If we don't look out for it, chances are it's going to infect our eyes. And as Jesus says, it's better to pluck it out rather than leave it in and find yourself drifting even further from me. So own and name the various weak points in our lives. And these we discover as we go through life. We're never too young or too old to discover the new weaknesses, the new attractions, the new lure that comes into our lives. The second practical point. When we then understand that we are to identify and name the weakness in order for us not to make it a habit or yield to it over and over again, we then have to do what Jesus says. We have to take a little distance from it or we have to make sure we surround ourselves with other things so that we don't give in to either the temptation of just the chocolate cake or anything else. In other words, beloved, God gives us common sense. Problem is, sometimes, even with common sense, we are still weak. But he says to us, if you identify your weakness and you know what they are, then try not to place yourself in a context where the weakness is going to be present and you may or may not have the strength to face it. These practical realities are what every believer has to face. So if I know I'm going to be gathering with a group of people who I love dearly, but guess what? Every time the group gathers, it turns into bad talking an individual or another group. And that is something I need to name. That is something I need to own. Because I now become part of that darkness. And I have two choices. The first is, when I meet with this friend or group of friends that I know and love, but it always turns into the devil's conversation, do I have the strength to say, stop it? This is not what pleases the Lord. Because either I will try to change them, or chances are, he, she, or they will try to change me. And even in my silence, by being in their presence, I'm actually consenting to the bad talking and the gossiping, the devil's language in destroying another person's name or character. We all have to take practical steps and become more aware of what it is we enter into. Is it leading to the glory of God or is it taking us away from God into the culture of the world, the reality of the devil, and the possible permanence of separation from God, which we call hell? Recognizing those first two practical points, we cannot forget the spiritual point. Well, what happens when we name the weakness? What happens when we try to use common sense to avoid the weakness, be it a thing, a person, a group, or an experience, and we still fail and fall? Jesus says something beautiful in today's gospel. He says, anyone who gives you a cup because you're a follower of mine, that person will not lose his or her reward. When Jesus was with his disciples at the Last Supper. He took the cup. He didn't just speak about a cup. He took the cup. And he says, this is my blood. The blood of the new and everlasting covenant will be shed for the forgiveness of sins. And herein lies the most important point of all. That Jesus, who tells us to be generous with each other, to care for each other, to look after each other's needs by giving even a cup of water to someone, this God says, I love you so much that I'm going to give you the cup of my very life. And this cup is given for the forgiveness of sins. 
This cup is given to show that no matter what, God desires our love, our relationship, our friendship for all eternity. And that's why Jesus gives us this cup at every single celebration of Mass when we gather either virtually or physically in church. And this is the cup that we hold on to. The cup that is given by our Savior for the forgiveness of sins. I heard two people quarreling once and one said to the other, I will never forgive you. And that person up to this day is living a life of sadness and anger. But the other person who says, yes, this was a rough conversation, but I still love you and forgive you. Another individual who chose to forgive, forgive self, forgive the other. He is more at peace and he's happier than he's ever been. There is a power, beloved, in coming to the Lord for forgiveness for self. And then that same power is given to each of us to forgive the other. This is how we can give a cup of life to the other. That when the other has failed us, when the other has what, for whatever reason, caused hurt or pain, or the pain has been mutual, we give each other the cup of joy of forgiveness. A cup that Christ first gives to each of us so that we can then share it with others. The beauty of the God we serve is that he is not just one who looks with love. He saves us in word and in fact. He saves us with his body and with the cup of his precious blood. How can we be tied to the sins of our past, beloved, when in the present moment God says, here's my cup, I love you, I forgive you? How can we hold on to past hurts and pains, which so many people love to do, when the moment God gives us this cup to drink, he now says, are you willing to share this cup of life with the very people that I have sent to you? This is our joy, the joy of knowing that we have a God who is always patient, who is always compassionate, who is ready to forgive, rich in mercy because he has a cup of life that never, ever can get drained. When we learn then how to surrender and submit to this God who truly saves and forgives, we will understand that we don't need to cut off anything except those moments or habits of sin which lead us away from him. But when we fail and fall, look to the Lord, because he will always choose to forgive us. And as he forgives each of us, so we must always be ready and willing to forgive each other. Be kind to yourself, beloved. Life is a journey. Be patient with yourself. For those times when we rose above temptation, we say, thank you, Lord because your spirit is at work, and I gave in to your spirit. But for those times when we failed, when we fell, when we dove into sin, be kind, because God is always kind to us. Allow him to bathe us. Allow him to wash our sins away in the River Jordan. Mama says, surrender to God, and he will make your slate clean. So, Take me to the river, I want to go. Oh, Lord, I'm asking you to take my hand and take me to the river, I want to know. Do you want to know the forgiveness of God in your life? Just say to him, Lord, take me to the river, I want to go. Yes, Lord, I want to go, so I'm asking, take me to the river, I want to know. To this great God who loves us, who forgives us, who strengthens us, to him, beloved, be glory and praise forever and ever. Amen. Conscious that we serve a loving, merciful God, let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Almighty creator of heaven and earth, and, and in Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Beloved, we will take our petitions from the Liturgy of the Hours morning prayer. Let us give thanks to our Savior who came into this world as God's presence among us. Let us now cry out to him as we say, Christ, King of glory, be our light and our joy. Christ, King of glory, be our light and our joy. Lord Jesus, you are the rising sun, the first fruits of the future resurrection. Grant that we may not sit in the shadow of death, but walk in the light of life, we pray to the Lord. Christ, King of glory, be our light and our joy. Show us your goodness present in every creature, that we may contemplate your glory everywhere, we pray to the Lord. Christ, King of glory, be our light and our joy. Do not allow us to be overcome by evil today, but grant that we may overcome evil through the power of good, we pray to the Lord. Christ, King of glory, be our light and our joy. You were baptized in the Jordan and anointed by the Holy Spirit. Grant that we may this day give thanks to your Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Christ, King of glory, be our light and our joy. That you will lead us out of the darkness of sin and error into your light and eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Christ, King of glory, be our light and our joy. For your protection against hurricanes and natural hazards and for an end to this coronavirus pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Christ, King of glory, be our light and our joy. And now, beloved, in the silence of our hearts, let us offer our own personal petitions. For the intentions in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Christ, King of glory, be our light and our joy. Let us pray. Speak, Lord, help us to listen. Let your word continue to shape and fashion our lives so that through the power of your spirit, we may all become effective disciples, sources of good news for the salvation of the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. 
Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, beloved, that my sacrifice and yours will be made acceptable to God, O our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we, your people, now acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord our God. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope and Kenneth our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, we keep in mind our families and friends Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all praise, glory, and honor is yours. Amen, amen, amen to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All praise, glory, and honor is yours. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, the peace of Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us joyfully offer each other the sign of Christ's peace, the peace of Christ. Christ. Uh, virtual peace hugs. Christ. And lots more virtual hugs. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Sins of the world, have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Sins of the world, have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Sins of the world, grant us, grant us peace. Beloved, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. Beloved, I now invite you to do your act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You strength, my shield, to you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You're my friend, and you are my brother, even though you are a king. I love you more than any other, so much more than anything. You alone are my strength, my shield to you alone may my spirit yield you alone are my heart's desire and i long 
to worship you. I want you more than gold or silver, only you can really satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my eye. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. The Lord is good to those who hope in him, to the soul that seeks him. Beloved, let us pray. Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, beloved. Thank you for allowing the ongoing family gathering online. We thank God for his many blessings. And as I shared with you in the homily, don't be lamed or tied to the sins of the past. Claim the Savior's presence in this moment. The innocent Lamb of God shed his blood on the cross and gave us the cup of life. The sinless one went into the Jordan, baptized for us so that we can follow him. So anytime the devil makes you feel a little soiled or dirty, just say to the Lord, take me to the river. I want to go, Lord, just hold my hand and walk with me now. Take me to the river. I want to know. Have a wonderful week, beloved. Thank you, Father. Same to you. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. See you next week. Our recessional hymn, number 154, number 154, Rejoice my soul. Your word is life and bright.
promises to be me. I am my child. You called my name. You filled my life. I find that you.